you know, I've got plenty of skin in the game. And I'm not, when, when that happened, when I saw the Godwell, the, you know, all the big hit stuff happen, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, well, that's not fun, but I don't, I have no emotional response to it. I'm like, I don't, it, I, I really think the people who have trouble with this and are mad and upset and all this stuff, of course, it's not something to celebrate. Uh, like, it's not, I, I don't think anyone's making a case that it's good for Hex that it happened or, or he Hex or whatever angle. Exactly. But the people who are so upset, I think they just, they don't believe. I agree. They really don't believe, like you said, like they don't believe that over time it's going to go back up. So they just like they just want to get stuck in this cycle of like fud down stuff. And it's like if you like if you either believe or you don't. And if you don't believe, you, if there's lots of ways to show it. And exactly. many people have been doing that. It's uh, yeah, I, I literally did not care. I was like, oh, OK, well, maybe it no. takes longer now. Maybe it take maybe it's they do some deal. Maybe they don't. I, I don't care. I think over time it will go up. So whatever happens now, exactly. it, doesn't, it doesn't affect me. I have no control over it. Why am I worried about it? Exactly. And, and, and the thing is, we need to realize is that people say that, oh, whales don't matter. Oh, oh, whales do really matter in this market. I don't care what market you are in. Whales and what they do create a fallout for smaller fish. And I think a lot of people right now, they, they're they very prudent on buying eHex. One, because of this. But two, because of fees. But down the road, when Ethereum solves their gas fees in a year or two, um, with whatever that case may be, it could be blockchain sharding. It could very well be sharding, which we've been hearing about since 2019. Um, that will no longer be a plausible argument to say, oh, my stakes on eHex are substantially more expensive to end than on Pulse Chain because... You'll have that integration. So I think that right now, a lot of people look at PHEX and that's fine because I do also believe that PHEX, again, not financial advice. I believe that PHEX will probably be the shiny object for this cycle regarding hexes. However, I don't believe that EHEX is going anywhere. And I think Richard made a very good point when he spoke to you. I think he spoke to you. And he said that, like, I don't know. Like, it's good to have both so that the market can decide. Because, like I said before, the market can decide P-Hex this month and then say, fuck P-Hex, and then go to E-Hex, and then say, fuck E-Hex, and then go to P-Hex. So it, it, it really is not one or the other. In the scheme of things, if a whale set, if a whale sees P-Hex at 20 cents and then E-Hex at 10 cents and then realizes, oh, shit, if I start buying, I can entice people to join in and then I can make an easy... I don't know, one X or two X. These are the games that these whales play. I'm super glad I asked them that question. <laughs> I had one question to ask him on stream uh, last year. And at the last minute, it was me and four attendees thinking, talking about in the green room, like, Hey, you know, I wonder, I think we we're actually talking back and forth about PX. Is it, is the migration? Is it, uh, you know, how does Richard think about it? I'm like, Oh, okay. I'll ask him. And funny enough, I asked him like, is it a migration? And his first response was no. And then he went on to talk about it. The market will decide. Blah blah blah. You can watch the clip. You know, he retweeted it, all that stuff too. And uh, I was just like, "Wow!" I think I remember asking that at some point, and I found it and uh, and tweeted it out. And then um, it was uh, he. Yeah, he's retweeting me a couple times. So that, that was that was cool to to get that information out based on the message that he wanted to send. Yeah, and not to mention like Bobby Hexelrod. This is probably my favorite message I've seen in this chat. Um, is the narrative of letting E Hex die on the vine upsets me. Maybe because I have so much invested in it monetarily, mentally, and emotionally. Um, because it's so short-sighted. Sighted. I absolutely agree. Because it goes to show that all of this, oh, we care about staking. We care about long-term. Long, we care about long-term. We care about delayed gratification. For many that initially vouched for that and initially venerated that and initially looked at people with disdain who held liquid hex, were just a bunch of bullshit artists. And that's why you're seeing a lot of new fish come in and look at a lot of the original hex investors with disdain. But it's like, okay, you talk about you talk about ten year stakes, fifteen year stakes, but then you'll put your coins in yield farms, then you'll emergency end stake, and then you'll say screw you to the e hex and go to p hex. When basically that's the shiny new object, and that's what Richard Hart has been saying. I know it's hex, but Richard Hart has been saying, oh screw it. Um, Richard Hart has been saying, you know. Oh, um, <clears throat> E-hex versus P-hex. 
talking about the shiny new object um, and being aware of shiny new object syndrome. So it's like, how can you reconcile that by being a, a, a code and a contract that's supposed to venerate long-term delayed gratification and then just say, screw you to it in the matter of a month and change narratives like that. Like that seems very hypocritical and very, um, you didn't believe in it in the first place. But I think the, I think the most basic way I could say it is EHEX will die if the market lets it die. Of course. Now, what it's not going to be anyone talking on Twitter or on streams. It's not going to be all no. this, like a group, like it's not going to be people with signs outside of, uh, you know, that I don't know, like it's not going to happen unless the market says we want it to happen because it benefits us in some way to, to let it die. So, and then, so the next question is what benefit is it for it to die there? Most of the people I would wager to say that have EHEX have PHEX because they got their copy and they have all the economic, economic energy on Ethereum. And we know all the benefits. We know all the stuff of pulse chains better in the staking gas fees, all that stuff. But why would anyone not want the other one, to live on so the biggest the argument the biggest argument i could find is it'd be harder to onboard but mm-hmm. i think we can figure that out i don't think it's that hard to figure out over time so <laughs> to me it's like the market will let it die if it's in their best interest to but they don't seem to be deciding that and time will tell but i don't see any reason why it would benefit uh the project that hold the reputation the bags right. the money the thing the people are involved for it to happen i can't see it maybe it'll change over time but I don't see it right now. No, I don't. I don't. I don't see it right now at all. I think that. I think that. And when you say onboarding, monetarily, yes, it's definitely easier to onboard people to PHEX than EHEX. But when it comes to trepidation, when it comes to, and I know a lot of people told me I was an idiot for this, but um, I disagree. If I'm already trepidatious with this technology anyway, do you think I really want to buy Ethereum on Coinbase or Kraken or Gemini, then send it to MetaMask, then use a bridge, then I have to go to PulseX, then I have to make sure wrapped pulse is on there, then I have to sell for then I have to sell that on PulseX to for PHEX. There's like five more obnoxious steps that I have to use in order to get PHEX rather than EHEX. All right, you go on, you buy Ethereum on Coinbase or whatever. You send it to MetaMask. You use Uniswap if you want, um, or MetaMask if you don't want to connect to Uniswap, and you just swap. Like yeah. that, there's a big difference in in people who don't want to use DeFi, and there are many, like myself, that don't want to participate in clicking all of these links and connecting your wallet because this is a space that really does create paranoia. Um, the one without the one without um, clicking all of those links generally tends to be the one that's more enticing. Do I think that PHEX will outperform EHEX in this cycle? I do. But do I think that EHEX has a place? And do I think once the gas fees on Ethereum go down, which I think is an argument that all layer one chains are specifically not focusing on because it it, it, it creates a sense of cognitive dissonance? doesn't matter what chain you are. BNB, Phantom. Pulse chain. When Ethereum has their gas fees go down in a year or two, that's a new narrative that puts Ethereum ahead of the majority of the layer ones out there. And if that's the case, you better have a narrative that entices people to come over to your chain. And right now, there are many chains that that vaunt scalability, they vaunt security, they vaunt decentralization. And I understand they vaunt an easier access for validators, which I think is a big problem with Ethereum, where you need a 32 Ethereum. And that's ridiculous. That's 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 a huge proposition. That's a huge um, that's a huge inhibitor for people to participate in the network. But when you start having transaction fees go down, when you start having those, when you start having that narrative, that's uh that's a ploy for people to be very interested um, to be a th- to be on Ethereum as well. I think too, just just in the um, onboarding, it's you know, like you said, Coinbase get Ethereum. Actually, I think that's even a case once the bull market comes around that people are more familiar with the Coinbase Uniswap hex route or or otherwise. That that's you know that could be even more familiar as far as like first mover advantage and stuff Coinbase has versus even using the fiat on ramps we have for Pulse Chain. Exactly. So 
I think later this year, we'll have both. We'll have the field on-ramps for Pulse Chain, where you can easily buy uh, PX, and you'll still have the way of doing it uh, through Coinbase or whoever else on EHEX. I think, so, th so that's one part. And the other part, I wanted to speak to Mark G's uh, point here. I think it's really interesting. Right now, and I've, I've basically stopped using Ethereum for most things. I really have. I, I, it's weird for me to click the button in MetaMask and go back to Ethereum. I never uh, used to begin with. <laughs> so it's it's so interesting. I never thought it would be like that much of like, oh god, I gotta go to Ethereum, I gotta pay these chance. It's really became that uh, for me too. Yep. And the buying volume, so so I don't think I'm alone in that. And I think a lot of hexagons and stuff that have came over, they don't want to put a lot of economic energy in Ethereum. They like the pulsing ecosystem, they like of the course we have, and we haven't even rolled out half or a quarter, a fraction of the products yet. So the buying volume on the ETH network is actually an interesting point that I don't think people yes, talk it about is. enough. No, it's a very good in, point. In the bear market, we're going to have less of it on eHex because less, less people will be buying. And all the people who are bullish on Pulse Chain, they're going to be using Pulse Chain a lot, at least you know right Absolutely. now, probably in the future. So um, yeah, that's onboarding is going to be interesting. I think it'll be different in the bear market versus bull market. But if you want a bull case for eHex, um, first mover advantage for, for it to be easy to buy from a trusted place. Yes, I would say I would give the I would give the tip of the hat to uh, you know Ethereum and all the on ramps yes. over there right now for Hex. Exactly, and that's why I think that that's a big proposition. The proposition on Pulse Chain is that the fees are cheaper and that you have the Hex and Pulse Chain community majorly focused on Pulse Chain. However, just because the Hex and Pulse Chain community is focused on Pulse Chain doesn't mean that there aren't other actors that may look at eHex with a different light. It may, it, it could very well. And again, I'm not advocating for either side. I hold both. But my point being is that like the, the knowledge base that the, 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 the ethos of saying, let's just let one side die is completely antithetical to the long-term notions of, of what this community is supposed to stand for. So I think personally, Again, in a year or two from now, when Ethereum implements sharding, whenever that may be, um, this narrative of cheap fees, it's not, it's going to be, it's going to be very, it's going to be a very different conversation. So, but I do understand where people are coming from and, and the market is speaking for itself. P-hex is a larger price than E-hex. You know, like the market has spoken right now. Um, but I think people right now, are solidifying that in a month's time, that's going to be the standard and it will never change. It could change one month to EHEX. It could change another month to PHEX. Like it's, it's, it's very, um, it's, it could be very cyclical. Now, again, this is a little speculation, but I'm thinking that I, I don't think that EHEX is going to go anywhere. Um, but I do, I do believe that PHEX will perform better personally, not financial advice, but that is my perspective. But I don't think eHex is 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 going anywhere. So